Lesson 6, Part 4, Universal Device, Creating an App on an iPhone or an iPad Project. This lesson will teach you how to make an universal app which will run on the Apple iPhones as well as the Apple iPads. If you wonder how an app is created for both the iPhone and iPad, this is the video you want to learn to do this. I will be showing you on how to make an app template so in the future you can just start using that template to build a universal app for both the iPhone and iPad so you can start building many apps quickly let's get started to build your universal app step one click on Xcode project okay so when you open up your Xcode project you would create a new Xcode project Make sure you're on the iOS application where you select single view application and click next. Product name, we'll call this universal device app. So after you type in product name, you would go to the organization name. We'll leave that blank. And then we're going to put in the company identifier. In this case, it's going to be com.live mobile technology. And then the class prefix, just leave it blank. And then we're going to select Universal. So this is where we're going to build a universal app. We're going to build the iPhone and the iPad all in one. Now, after you're done, just click Next. And I'm going to save this on the desktop. And I'm going to hit Create. This is how it's going to look. There is a folder. And inside the folder, first one is the Universal App dot Xcode P-R-O-J. This is the file that you're going to need to open. So once you open that, this is how the Xcode project look like. What I want to do here is we're going to the next step. Step two, viewcontroller.m. In viewcontroller.m, what we will be learning is how to let the compiler or the computer know when to load an iPhone or an iPad. You see, Apple releases new Apple devices every few months. It used to be an iPhone 3, iPhone 4, and iPad 1 and 2, and so on. Now, there's new devices such as iPhone 5, 5C, 5S, and so forth, with technology such as Retina Display, iPad 2, iPad 3, and so on. So the list goes on. Who knows what Apple releases within the next few months? So let's put in the basic standard size and then the retina size to cover all the resolution of the current devices and newer devices. This is why we're building this universal app. Now, let me take you to an understanding of how there are standards of iPhone resolution and iPad resolution. First, the iPhone has 320 by 480 then the retina came out and the iPhone is double the size of the standard iPhone 320 by 480 that is the newer standards are iPhone 640 by 960 and who knows what's gonna happen in a few more months or the newer devices of the iPhone and that are coming out the next one is the iPad the iPad standards used to be 768 by 1024 now there's iPad with retina display and the resolution double, which now the iPad is 1536 by 2048 pixels. Of that, keeping in mind what's gonna happen of the next few newer models, we don't know the resolution is gonna go up and down. So that's why when we're building this app, we're gonna build this for the standard and the retina and in the future, larger size so this will accommodate both the standard and the retina display and so on and in the future newer devices with newer resolution and higher resolution this universal app will cover that in this video i'm going to put in a background on both the standard and the retina display apple devices then after putting it in we'll be testing to make sure that the background image works and respond accordingly to the iPhone standard and the iPhone retina and then the iPad standard and then the iPad retina display. Step three, write the following condition. We're gonna write the condition in the M controller and in the M controller there is a view did load method. In the view did load method 
the inside the curly bracket we're going to put the view did load here and we're going to press enter and we're going to go ahead and start working on a condition this is a very important condition uh, we're going to write this condition called if and else statement that means if the background of your image code is an iPad with the resolution 768 by 1024, then the command if parenthesis UI user interface idiom is exactly equal to the UI user interface idiom pad. That command alone will launch your iPad background. So if that's the condition, then it loads the iPad resolution 768 by 1024 or else we will have to put in a condition by writing this condition to let your compiler know that it first checks the current resolution size of the device. Then the compiler compares if the size that is greater than 568 height and it will display one of the two choices. The first choice is any size greater than or equal to 568 height, it will display a retina display. Anything less than 568 height, it will display a standard size display. I know you're a little confused by now, but let's get back to Xcode. Let's dive into these if-else condition and this universal app that we're creating, and I'll show you what I mean. Where you see super view did load, all you have to do is you type in that command called if ui underscore user interface idiom is exactly equal to UI user interface idiom pad that's we're gonna use an iPad just to start off with you can have a statement inside the if condition and that if condition is going to say very simple if we have a user interface that is an iPad version then what we're going to do is we're going to copy two code snippets I made available for us. The first one is background image universal. We're going to make a background image and we're going to drop that into here. Notice that it says UI image view. This is the object for a background. It is the object to build the background for the iPad and the universal device. We're using a standard size 768 by 1024 resolution you would want to pay particular attention to is the background.png. I made a background.png on a photo utility and I copied it and dropped it into the image folder which is here and how I did that was I went to the universal device I right mouse click and I added a new group and I type in the new group name image that's the folder of the image but right now I already did it so I'm just going to remove that Pretty much, I created the image, I put it on the desktop. I grab that image and I grab and drop it to my image folder. Once I let go, it asks me, do you want to copy the items into the destination? Make sure you check mark this and you click finish. When you click finish, it stores it right here. Now, going back to viewcontroller.m, we're going to put a text UI label and I made that UI label as text U, UI label, which is the universal app text. I grabbed that, I dropped it right into here. So when I grab that, I drop these two. I'm going to show you what that does for your app. So the if condition works where if the user actually opens up in an iPad, it will enable to run on an iPad using this command. So this command will automatically search for the iPad. Now, if you don't have an iPad, it runs on a iPhone and what happens? So you have to put an else condition and when you put an else condition, you're going to put in two brackets. Then you want to put in a statement like this, this uh, sentence here, CG size, size equal UI screen main screen and then it's bounds and then size and then semicolon enter so what does this do is that you're using this CG size so that the compiler can see what size of this resolution is the iPhone since it needs to find out so then what we do is 
writing this condition is to let the compiler or computer know that it first checks the current resolution size of the device it is in. Then the compiler compares if the size is greater than 568, then it will do something. Okay, and then so, and then I put in another statement to let the compiler know to start comparing by finding the size and selecting the so the appropriate condition. So I use this command called, let me go download it. There you go, let me go down. And I use this command to do it. It's if the size.height is greater than or equal to 568.0, then do this. And then I'm gonna put two curly brackets and in there we're going to add in two interface that will load your iPhone it's gonna load if the condition is we're gonna make one condition for the iPhone retina and above and that condition is right here I'm gonna use retina code snippet display retina display and I'm gonna drag and drop this here and then the next one is I'm gonna put in the text retina which is retina text and I drop it in here so I got that to snippet there and now what if the iPhone you have is not a retina so then we're gonna to have to put another else condition inside the else condition here you're gonna put the condition that will the condition to start your iPhone standard is since the resolution is lower than 568 pixel so when you do that you press enter I'm gonna go ahead and add in the code snippet for that and the code snippet is standard display I'm gonna drop that in here and that's the background I want you to take a look at the code snippet that I grab and drop over here just remember that these code snippets that I grab and drop, you can pause the video and copy it. There's another way is you can go to my website at www.livemobiletechnology.com slash pages slash documents right here. And there where you see lesson six, part four, universal device app for iPhone and iPad Xco file, you can click here and you can download that uh, universal device app project for Xcode and you can run it and open it up. Going back to the Xcode project, I forgot to mention to you that the start iPhone standard, you see there, the UI image image name should be background.png. So let's change that to background.png. The next one is standard text. And so the snippet is this right here. Just grab this and drop it over here. So going back to here, once I'm done with this, that takes care of all the conditions uh, so you can start your universal app. Now let's go ahead and test this on multiple devices and see if it actually runs on iPhone Retina 3.5, iPhone Retina 4 inch, iPhone Retina 4 inch 64 bit, and iPad and iPad Retina. Let's run it. Okay, let's start off with the iPhone Retina 3.5. This is how I normally do it. When you finish a project, you wanna press product, clean. You wanna go ahead and build the uh, project again. And then after that, you run the project by clicking here. Once you run it, this pops up, simulator pops up, and it runs. And there's your device. You see that you had a cutoff down here, and I put it at 420. It didn't cover it all the way, so I put it under, I'm gonna go ahead and rechange that to 480, and see how that runs. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. So it runs with the full size, you see, and it covers everything from top to bottom. Let me explain to you why I recommend the universal app device approach. With the codes I put in place, 
this universal app is very helpful because it will respond to all Apple devices such as iPhone, iPad, iPhone Retina, and iPad Retina. All devices. This is the approach I recommend for many of my apps and for those app developers that will be building any new apps, you need to use the universal app device approach. You see, a few years ago, I put up an app for the iPad only. But had I had the app built in a way that is for both the iPad and iPhone, it will help me a lot because users can get my apps on multiple devices and that will boost my sales volume and my download volumes. Also, it will help me market better because it's on a universal device. It is not limited to just the iPad. So using this universal app helps you to spread all your apps throughout all devices. And I hope this lesson is helpful. If you find this helpful, please click on the like button on the lower left hand corner of this video. And uh, you have any comments or questions, just please post it and I'll try my best to respond to your uh, questions. Thanks for watching.